Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Jarrett Goes to the Movies, a weekly podcast where Jarrett Reddick and friends get together and talk about a movie that they watched that week. Plus, whatever the hell else was on their minds. Get ready for the best hour and a half you'll have in the next hour and a half. Here they are, Eric, Casey, Sean, Amy, and because he's famous, his name's on the show, Jarrett. Welcome to Jarrett Goes to the Movies. I'm uh, I'm doing my research right now uh, because I forgot to look something up that I wanted to... What's up, Eric? What you got going on there? <laughs> what is Eric doing? He's in such a grand room. Look yeah. how big it must be. Oh, yeah, you be. got a new piano. Because all the is... couches and pianos, everything's so small. Dude. Well, not everything's small, Eric. She didn't yeah. mean that. I think you're muted, Eric. Yeah, you're muted, buddy. Eric is <laughs> muted. Yes, he is. Yep. Uh, yes. You guys haven't been to my new house, so... It's beautiful. And you're not going to, it's probably, so very well because we're moving again in 807 PM. six months. Are y'all, are y'all really moving again in six months? Yeah. To where? No, it's just so we, we won't be able to see this house. This, this oh, I point. see what he's yeah. saying. I can't. I'm. I fucking can't keep up, man. I. I. You know. Uh, welcome. Well, it's both. Welcome to Jarrett goes to the movies. Are you moving in six months or not? I. I don't know. Why would you be moving in six months? That doesn't make any yes. sense. You just got that house. Because we're. I know, but when our realtor messaged us and told us how much we could make off of it, um, first I passed out, yeah. and then. I said, okay. And so then we went and we're building another one in the next neighborhood. Wait, what? Down the road. Oh, I thought you were just joking. Good for you. Now, no. uh, do you know how to do all that? Like, you know how to like frame and stuff? <laughs> uh, yeah, I've, you know, I've built four houses now. So this, no problem. You know, all it takes is a I little that of that good old American work ethic. Yeah. And a uh, little elbow grease. I was going to say uh, elbow lumber. Grease. Yeah. You know, oh, well, good luck finding nails. that. Do you need any of those microchips? I also have to, I have to buy a construction hat with its sweeping lines that kind of frame my face just so. That looks like a, and it, are it so looks very like you're making a, a stormtrooper hat or some shit. I like, don't recommend American work ethic. <laughs> We've. We yeah. did a pretty hefty construction job in our backyard, and we tried American work ethic this yeah. time, and it was yeah. a nightmare. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> no, the only people that the only people that were awesome were the tile people. 100%. Guess what? Not Americans. Oh my god! <laughs> <laughs> Everybody else was well, fucking we're gonna terrible. Be looking, <laughs> we're going to be looking for some of that good old Hispanic work ethic. That's it, and, man. To frame uh, a house, things and, are going to be great. They fucking mm-hmm. frame that shit in two days, man. Oh, it is yeah. crazy it's, what they do. It's, I it's, hate to go off on a tangent here, but so that's this, this, um, you know, the Mexicans are taking our jobs. Yeah. People. Yeah. But at the yeah, same time, it's like Mexicans are, they're lazy and all they do is take from the government. It's like Schrodinger's Mexicans at the same time. They're the hardest working people ever. And they take your jobs and also they are lazy and don't pay taxes and only take from the government. Like you got to choose, just choose which one, which one. stupid argument you want to make. You here's, know, the, here's the deal. pick one. Here's the deal. morons. Here's the thing. Okay. Rush Limbaugh. Tell dealing, me where I'm wrong. Dealing Let me with just fucking tell you middle-aged right white men is literally what I assume like online dating's like. They just fucking like ghost you and make you feel like you deserved it. Probably like Ugh. you know. Like, it's just, it's the fucking, it's <laughs> what and Mexicans don't do that or what? What are we? What? How did? Did you just flip the fucking switch? What just happened? What do you mean? We're talking about Mexican workers, aren't yeah, we? Yeah, she's talking about American about workers. Oh, fucking... okay, right. Okay, so this is what I'm saying. The and my wife, SMU knows this... fucking douchebags that were like, oh, they seem like a little <laughs> small business that's local. If you Let's if you're know. in Texas, yeah, this is and very you want to know you want to know like what like how that labor is affecting your daily life, and you don't even fucking know it. You want to complain about some shit? Go drive on some roads in a <laughs> in an adjoining state for a while, and after you get off the fucking shockwave that is those fucking roads. By the way, that's a Six Flags joke. You come back and you're like, oh, okay. 
<laughs> now I understand. Yeah. It's because our roads are fucking awesome. Oh, also, I don't have to roof fucking houses. You know? Oh, God. God. Jesus Christ, man. Don't even get me. How did you get me here? How the fuck? What kind of um, turn is this thing that you've done to me right here? No, but I do. Have I a, thought I was logged into my political podcast. I got a question. I, I got a question for you, though. And this is in all seriousness, because this is what gets talked about in real estate these days, and especially in Texas, where, sure, we can all sell our houses and make some good money. But it's like, OK, but where the fuck are you going? You have managed, you're saying, to figure out to where you can do this. And by building one, you're going to save uh, some some sort of a situation of money to where it's going to make sense for you to move over there. And you stay in the same schools and shit. Yeah, I mean, basically, you know, we sold both Kelsey and I paid off every single penny of debt we had of any form except for Kelsey's student loans and mm. still had quite a bit left over to put down on the new one that's bigger and it it's laid out a little better for what we need you know know, zoe's only here every other weekend so so she'll be upstairs you've already done this then and so what there are people who are buying your house are going to just fucking wait for you to come to get out Uh, of there get this they're from california what that's weird weird. (laughs) oh wow For those of you it's who don't understand, it's a totally unique situation. <laughs> That's so <laughs> weird that somebody would move. For those of you who don't understand the humor in that, uh, it, it's mass exodus out of California into Texas. Into Texas, I'm right now. I'm just waiting for it's, the sky to fucking turn gray it's and just, never be able to see the sun again. It's crazy because, and it's a tax thing for a lot of people, but also it's just you know, you it's we still have room. Just you know? Google if you're not. From here, or especially if you're out of the country, just look up what a million dollar house would get you in California and in Texas. Like, just Mm -hmm. look it up. And the reason she picked a million dollars is not that we all live in in million dollar houses. It's It's because it's perspective for California. Yeah, exactly. I think that's a very good example. Actually. What happened was so the person who now, bought what this happened is was in. yeah we would never live what in a million was, dollar house what are we <laughs> it's a gross it's a it's an investor but they sold one investment property in California and bought like six here uh, yeah, with right. the money from it they're gonna so your, and they're gonna fill those houses with in your neighbor hold on but in your neighborhood. And so, and your HOA allows that because this dude pulled a fast one in our neighborhood and did it without the HOA. No, and he owns five houses on our street. What? Yeah, yeah. isn't that and crazy? he and he leases them out, and we don't. That's actually not even allowed here. But he no, fucked, it's not. He it, pulled it off somehow. It used to piss me off because I was like, you know, that maybe that could affect your, um, you know, your home value yeah, and all this know. stuff, but. Over the years, like, it's been kind of nice not having to get to know some of our neighbors. Yeah. <laughs> you know, like, fuck it, they're not going to be here that long. I know, but then you got, we had, yeah. some, like, temporary John. I for, oh, like, I, I didn't, forget their names. I didn't want them to leave, you I know? Love them, yeah. yeah. That's why we just don't talk to the directly next Yeah, fuck ones. everybody else now, you know? No, I'm kidding. I love Edward. Edward is our new next door neighbor, and he's the shit. He's a, a uh, like, a referee. And he just a barber. He has a referee mentality. It's fucking great. He's, he's an best. actual referee. What yeah. does he what? referee? I didn't know he was a referee. Yeah, he refer. He's a. He's like a, a football and some other sport referee, like Jello, for a living. That's Jello what he does. wrestling. Yeah. Huh. That's what he does. Isn't, can can he be hired for children's birthday parties? I'm sure that he can. Or just know. a hangout night. I just don't know that he's going to want to dress up as Spider Man, but I could ask him. No, oh, I just need him to referee my children. <laughs> yeah, like we don't have somebody to call if we need a Spider Man. Oh my God, you're right. We do. Jesus Christ. Like yeah. Rob Filosetti just brings one. Like, well, he's it's he's Spider Man. Our my bass player is Spider Man in his, in his in their pregnancy pictures. Mm-hmm. Oh, I got to see those. Oh, it's fucking great. Well, my next door neighbor just randomly walked out of his house to get in his car in a Spider Man outfit one day, and James just freaked out. Yeah, Spider Man sure lives Jesus next door. Christ, I'm like, put happen? your mask on. I actually, <laughs> I actually texted Jackie, who's Rob's wife, the other day. This like little TikTok thing that was like, this guy that I'm on this Tinder date with showed up like this and they're watching the Spider-Man movie and he's like head to toe in Spider-Man. So I sent it <laughs> yeah. to him and Rob and she immediately responded with a photo of him like laid out on their bed in a Spider-Man costume. Yeah. And she's like, now here's the thing about him. He doesn't just have one. 
He oh. has multiple Spider-Man costumes. Does he have that black one that's like I am, Venom but, or something? And they're like fitted perfectly to him. Like Are it's they custom. They're fucking expensive. Like they're really, really nice. That's hilarious. On there. And I it's great. This. Yeah. He uh and of course he's super Rob in the new bowling for soup video. Well the, uh, congratulations, Eric. That's great. Yeah, that's, that's cool. something I that thought I, you were just joking. <laughs> I'm gonna be completely honest. I feel a little bit weird that I wasn't consulted about any of this, you know, mm -hmm. or at least, you know, you haven't said anything. Or look for a house in oh, our and neighborhood. Oh, Sean's over here going, oh, well, he talked to me about it. You know, that's, well, are fucking, even, dude, are we even fucking friends? How are you going to move twice in like a year and still live in Melissa? Like, I don't understand. <laughs> well, I lived we here for a while, here. I'll tell you that much. <laughs> hey, hey ladies hey, you moved out uh, <laughs> yes i did um <laughs> sorry you got out of that town. i fucking made myself laugh on <laughs> and what's great is is i'm in a, a relationship and a marriage now where i can make that joke uh -huh. and know that i'm not in trouble yeah fucking great trouble. um well dude no but in all seriousness that's fucking great i think that's cool i mean it's a little bit weird though that you're you live next to your in-laws and you like living next to them. Are they like, what the fuck? Are they no. also moving? <laughs> kind of. Shut up. <laughs> kind of. Are they? <laughs> no, they're not. Um, but it's literally. Uh, I bet I bet we're no further on a golf cart in our new house than like Amy is to you guys is how close we'll be to them. It's just right across the street the road would you so say that it's, it's a it's a hop skip you know, and a jump over there hop skip and a jump and then just one giant leap for mankind quarter mile jump yeah 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 you do have a delay thing that's happening but we can work with it it's gonna be fine well dude i uh dude congratulations that's fucking great uh and i'm trying uh, to undelay Underlay, underlay. <laughs> <laughs> Reba, Reba. <laughs> McIntyre. Roadhouse. <laughs> All right, hold on a second. <laughs> Man, you're on a roll. <laughs> you startled the echo. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna <laughs> back to back winners here. <laughs> I'm gonna have an asthma attack. I swear to God. Oh man, fuck! I'm awake. Um, well, dude, that's awesome. I uh, I love that for you. And uh, Amy, what's going on with you, Amy? Hi. You're a, you're. I mean, am I allowed to say that you're like a what you do now? Or no? I'm going to say I have a job. I, just, I have a new a job. job. Yeah. yeah. And you love it. I love it. Yeah. And, you and I'm it. very excited about it. Can't drink on weeknights anymore, though. I mean, I will. Yeah, sure. Yeah, because that's what we fucking do. Yes. Yes, of it's course. It's fine, and See, I'm excited. Yeah, yeah. I'm also trying to buy a new car. There are a lot of things happening. Yeah. And, and, the, and again, life shit, right? You can't just go get a car sometimes now like they oh, just no. don't have them they don't have them so now i'm on a couple different lists mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. whoever calls me first that's the car that i will go is it the competing brands that are the same car and yeah, you're just I'm gonna looking take at a whichever tahoe one tahoe and a yukon yeah. they're pretty in down to the buttons they're the same car mm -hmm. so i called two different people two different dealerships and we'll just see who calls me first i was thinking about ordering one but that takes almost a year now yeah yeah, I know. And the thing is, too, is if you order one, then you'd be ordering a year old model and then the new ones come out. Yes, exactly. Right. So weird. I didn't even think about that part. Isn't this a weird time to be alive? Like it it's is weird. You know, they're like there's shortages of here's I'm going to tell you what happened to me the other day, guys. And and I, I understand that, you know, I, I, I don't have a lot of problems. But sometimes something happens to me and it's so bad that I just want to go home and bite my pillow. Yeah. Okay. You know? <laughs> mm -hmm. And so the other day I, I went on a bunch of errands. Okay. And uh, most of those errands were over in the same area over by where the Bowling for Soup uh, warehouse is. And uh, yeah, I'd, I'd done a few things. I picked up my uh, I picked up Allie. My uh, my dog that oh. passed away, I picked her up in her little box and I went to the drugstore and I dropped Oda. I had to drop something off for Emma. I got uh, Casey's car ma maintained or whatever. I'd really had a successful morning, guys. 
And uh, so I decided I would to, I would treat myself to a Schlotzky's. Right? <gasps> God, I love Schlotzky's. I fucking love it, right? And she doesn't. Well, and you know, this is an understanding of things to where it's like, look, she worked next to one for long enough to where she's yeah. still... It's it just, it's not coming back for her. And I was like that about Chipotle and Subway for a long time because we they sponsored tours and we would eat it every day. And I get oh, that. Yeah. I really do. Also, the bread tastes like a loofah. I love that loofah bread. Yeah. Uh, it's fucking so good, by the way. <laughs> Buttered so loofah. So I go into the Schlotzky's and I order to go. You went in? Yeah, because I had to pee. Oh, okay. Got it. Yeah. So I was I took it with me because I eat in the car and listen to my book yeah. or whatever. I'm 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 either a podcast or a book or whatever it is. And I you know, that's my me time. I don't mind I like eating in the car by myself and uh you know, having that going on. <clears throat> anyway, I got uh usually I either get the turkey uh or the roast beef. And if I get the roast beef, I just get it with just cheese and mustard. But on any of their sandwiches, I add the Schlotzky sauce. I fucking love what? their the Schlotzky's. You don't know what I'm talking about? Nope, like never had it. So they have like a, I, I buy it by the bottle. Like a special sauce. Louisiana, Louisiana hot, hot, sauce. hot sauce. It's a Louisiana oh. hot sauce, right? Okay. And it's, it's, however they figured it out, it's perfect for their particular sandwich. Okay. It's, yeah. it really is. It's, it's almost like, um. Did we tell y'all about the time that we got Arby's and they didn't bring us any Arby's sauce? So oh. Casey figured out how to fucking make it. And it's crazy. It's like no, just ketchup and it was ketchup. Barbecue and sauce. It's it's ketchup and something else. And you can't tell the difference. It's nuts. Hmm. So anyway, I the guy goes, hey, you want hot sauce? And I'm like, yes, I do. I want this hot sauce right now. I could have not taken the hot sauce and I could have, this is such a rockstar dad bit that's happening right now. It's like, I've kind of, I probably should have just fucking said, maybe I'll do it on both shows and y'all can vote on which I did it better on. Do. And, uh, so I, I get the, the sandwich and I could have easily unwrapped it there and mm -hmm. put the sauce on. They just have it there, you know, so you can oh, do sure. that. But I'm like, well, fuck, I, I don't need to do that. I'll just take it in the car, and it's way easier than that way. I also don't have, like, a half-wrapped sandwich. Those things can kind of fall apart. It's a whole thing. So I get out there, and I open up the bag, and the hot sauce they gave me, Texas Pete. Texas Pete's. Now, they've been doing that lately. What the fuck what that the is? Texas, exactly. I have you want to know why? Because it's shit's not from Texas. It's bullshit. I garbage. have to tell you this right now. I don't actually have a fucking problem with Texas Pete's. I have a problem with Texas Pete's on my fucking Schlotzkies. Texas Pete is fine if you're in, a, in fucking Idaho. Right? Like. So, Eric, you've <laughs> experienced this? Do, is this? This is not isolated? It made me want to throw my sandwich through a window. Yeah. And then go back up there and just say, nobody asks for hot sauce and wants you to give them Texas Pete's. Either say, here's your hot sauce, or just say we're out of it. But don't yeah. try to, like, you've got some sort of production issue right. on your end. Mm -hmm. Fucking fine. But just tell me that up front because I don't ever want to eat a single bite of a Schlotzky's Deluxe Original Add Jalapenos <laughs> without that. Wait, I get an original too. Sauce. What makes it Deluxe? Uh, that deluxe Double original. The, oh, okay, yeah, yeah. It's, Double the meat. Do they oh, no, put that, that? Do they put that middle piece of bread in there? It's like it's like a Big no. Mac or whatever. No, it's, no. It's like once you open the sandwich, you've committed. But I almost feel like everybody, you know, people that are aware of this Texas Pete fucking masquerade that is happening all over our state. But like, I feel like you just go. Oh, uh, I don't have hot sauce. I'll just eat this at home. <laughs> so, right. But once you open it, you're like, fuck. Oh, yeah. The thing is, is that, again, any sort of hot sauce will be fine on most sandwiches. It's like when you go, if you go to Firehouse, well, it's not like this anymore, but you see when you go to Firehouse, they, they have 40 different hot sauces and you can try whichever oh, yeah. one you want. It's fucking great. You can't do that anymore because, nope. like, you know, COVID. COVID. But at Slotsky's, those sandwiches are made for that particular hot sauce. That's what's supposed to go on there. It's but you're supposed to drench that shit. It mixes with the mustard, runs down your fucking arm. If you got the turkey and they do the light mayo or whatever, it's really fucking gross, but still it's delicious. And anyway, I was fucking pissed. 
And so I texted my wife and I just said, I just, the worst thing in the world <laughs> fucking just happened to me. And she's like, oh shit, what? Well, here's what happened. And I told and her. And so then he, she, me a he told her <laughs> and they moved, they moved the Holocaust down to line two. <laughs> And moved Jarrett's Schlotsky's uh, experience up to number one. I, and then like the Cambodian. North Carolina. Yeah. I, but the thing North is, Carolina. is that, and here's the deal. Then I had to decide, do I walk back in there? Oh, my God. oh you no. Know, with a sandwich, not to complain, but to set it on the table oh. and put the hot sauce <laughs> on there, you know, because I'm not going to complain. I don't talk to no. people, right? So that's not going to happen. You know, so like what'd the, you do? The, I just fucking ate it, but it wasn't, <laughs> it really wasn't the same. Again, I, I like Arby's roast beef and cheddar. It sounds, it's, and again, that's not something I get a lot. And you know, we had it right. We had a few times during COVID or the, the, when we were locked down, right. We had it a few times, but it's just not something that you just get. It's on a completely different side of town and whatever. But when you do get it, you want to have all of the supplies. Yeah, and you get excited about it. You get so stoked. Oh, man. And it's I'm like, sad about it. That shit, it's almost like uh, <laughs> Whataburger, you you have to have their ketchup, right? If you go to Arby's, you got to have oh Arby's gosh. sauce. It's like, that's the thing. It's, Arby's sauce for sure. I don't know about Whataburger ketchup because I don't eat ketchup You don't eat ketchup? Much. No, because I get their... Uh, chicken bites with mm. extra cream gravy. So I use the gravy with my fries sure. and it's delicious. Okay, I understand that. But in this movie, the movie yeah. that we will eventually talk about, <laughs> I have a comment about ketchup and french fries. Okay. Okay. Don't no, let me forget. I know exactly what mm-hmm. you're going to say and I'm stoked about yep. this. This is going to be a good debate because I actually yeah. am going to retort. Um, <laughs> oh, we're going to oh, fight. No. fight. One of y'all. No, 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 no. no. It's not y'all. a negative. It's not. It's it's a it's a um, it's an add on bonus comment. Add on bonus different dish. Oh, yeah. okay. Yeah. Oh okay. man, this is going to be great. Yeah, this is going to be great. Going to say one of y'all is sounds like you're a psychopath, and <laughs> one of y'all is right. So we'll see. Um, Casey had to go. Uh, this is our second uh, member of the cast that Oop. had to go tend to a child. Um, so she has gone. Man. To uh, to the, Sean, how you doing, buddy? You doing? Uh, Sean had his booster, and it kicked your butt a little bit, right? It did, yeah. All Saturday, I was dead. And um, did like did it not just? Yeah, we hurt can your tell arm? by your voice that you're not feeling good. Oh no, I'm fine. Yeah. Wait, wait, what'd you ask? Me? Yeah, there was an, someone else being annoying. <laughs> what I'm gonna be honest. I can't fucking <laughs> open this beer. You want to give this a it's shot? It's because you put the thing, <laughs> you put it in the thing. Oh, you can't do You it. open it first. You got to crack the lid on it and then you got to open it. Are you being yeah. serious? Yeah, I never, I opened the beer before I put it in its little holder. Oh. See? I'm telling you. My. <laughs> yeah. Because <God. laughs> it spins in there. You yeah, it spins. It. It's just going to spin. Ding Silly dong. goose. I was holding it by the top of the thing. I remember Listen. my first beer. I know. <laughs> oh, got him. Got I am him. a scientist. Got him. Well, Sean, we're glad you're back. Mm. Back to normal. Um, <laughs> and maybe I, I skipped over you because you had to go tend to a child. But, uh, you know, how are you? I'm good. <laughs> I'm hanging in there. Yeah. Um, tired today. I am freaking tired. Yeah. We got I did this thing where early. I woke up yeah. in the morning and then I just stayed awake all day. <laughs> <laughs> you ever tried that? <laughs> this shit is wild. Yeah. <laughs> God, why? <laughs> I actually told my doctor that today. This is true. Uh, she, I was, and I just go, yeah, we're doing this thing now where we're just like trying to get up like a normal time and then just stay awake all day. <laughs> and she was like, oh, okay. Yeah. And I'm like, yeah, you know, COVID naps, you know? And, uh, I try to explain to people that we have a little bit of an unconventional lifestyle, but well, we go to bed it, late. It doesn't reflect. Well. No. Yeah. I don't know. People don't also, you know what? Fuck people. Yeah, we mind can, your business. Anyway, we I'm can on a, sleep till we want to sleep. I'm doing well. I'm doing this like walkathon thing app with <gasps> some of our neighbors, and I'm about one point away from beating beating your husband. And I'm gonna. Oh, he told do me it. that you were. Oh, I already. Oh no, not yet. He's oh. like one above me. Ooh, he was. He's threatened. I could, He told me at dinner I know, because he was going like two point six miles, and all of a sudden he started upping it to like three. Yep. And I'm like, you son of a bitch. Mm-hmm. I'm getting. He, I'm getting him tomorrow. He knows you're getting close. I'm doing two a days. Ooh wee. Uh, exercise. It's a good thing. I, uh, I'm going to start doing that. Yeah, we do the same distance. He just does his in half the time. <laughs> uh, he started running. What am I looking at? Amy, look what I got. <gasps> <gasps> oh, 
Oh my gosh, I'm so excited. Are we, oh, are is we that gonna the get, foot peeler thing? Are we going to get Ooh. foot pics in the, in the group chat? Yeah, for sure. Nice. Our fans only, right? Yeah. We got to get that going. <laughs> that's it. That's where OnlyFans should be is We're just gonna, oh, peeling yeah. foot I got it pictures. backwards. Well, that's the thing is like there's so many people with foot fetishes I've yeah. heard. Uh, and uh, there's got to be people with peeling Peel- foot the- fetishes because they can get super specific. Well, like if you people post like a video of you peeling your foot, I will watch it 10 times. I <laughs> swear to God. True. I do watch a lot of really gross videos and it does make you feel like just kind of bad about yourself afterwards. No, but, like, I, I love a yeah. good like earwax extraction. Sure. I can't do like, it. Like a real deep blackhead. Yes. I, you know, uh, Derek and Dennis at the pub one night started watching those pill, uh, pimple popper videos. And oh yeah. I, it's just not for me. I I don't mind gross things. I don't, it really doesn't. I, it's just, that's just definitely the not only my thing, thing that I don't like about a pimple popper video is if there are other people in the room and you can see how bad it smells. Oh, gee. Because <laughs> <laughs> that's Ooh. the thing. You see people within a, I don't know, five foot radius of the person being popped. And you can see the second that that smell hits their face. Yeah, oh, nobody oh, really God. likes to watch it. It's just one of those like, <laughs> oh, God, this is so terrible. But I like, can't stop watching you can't, it. Yeah, you can't thing. stop. And then your yeah. algorithm catches up with that. So, yes. Just- oh my god this fucking algorithm okay yeah i'm scrolling through and i just there was this ad for like snow skis that looked really neat and i just was curious in my mind i wonder how much a set of skis costs i have no idea <laughs> you could have told me they're one hundred dollars yeah. you could have told me that they're three thousand dollars i would have no way of knowing so i just clicked on it they're like 1200 bucks for these skis. Okay, cool. Now I know. My natural state of curiosity has been satisfied for this specific moment. And God damn it, do these people not think that I am in the market for some new fucking snow you skis. You got some skis coming in. <laughs> Dude, I bet I you mean, anything. After a month, they're going to wear you down and you'll be like, yeah, I am going to go skiing. This, I'm just going to have to. <laughs> yeah, today. So we're going to we're gonna put a... Uh, we're going to add a TV outside because you can't see the TV from one of the sides of the yard. And all I did was me and Casey went out there and we discussed what kind of mount we're going to use. Oh. <laughs> and I swear to God, Instagram, Facebook, and I got I got a couple of emails. emails. I'm not joking. Like, mm-hmm. And I'm just, not certain that like the one that we decided on wasn't something that we just made up. <laughs> like we were like, what if a mountain did be nice? this? No, no, that no, cool? no. That thing's a thing. <laughs> I actually did um I did follow up on that because I was like, am I just fucking talking shit? Because she goes, <laughs> does this and she goes, Did you just make that up? Like, oh no, that's gotta exist. And I went back just to make sure, hey, does this fucking thing exist? And it does. So um anyway. Yeah, man, that's how they get you. But I don't mind. I really don't. Because here's the thing. I uh if I need to order cat food, I just talk about it and then somebody reminds me. And uh, it's great. Fortunately, uh, my Instagram specifically, because that's the it's Instagram that I think is the most like ads and stuff, right? Mm-hmm. Like I get like TikTok stuff and things like that. But Instagram is the one that is constantly ads and, and historically it has gotten me to buy some shit that I did not need. 100 percent. Over and over and over again. Little Absolutely. dumb things, right? Something has happened to where my Instagram has decided that I wear like designer clothing. <laughs> oh. <laughs> and anyway, I must have amazing taste. I don't know because I'll be scrolling and then I'll be like, those shoes are cool. It'll be like $8,000. I'm like, oh. like holy no. shit. Like, <clears throat> who the Man. fuck? What is this for? And so because I clicked it, mm-hmm. then it keeps happening. And so it's like shit. Like, I mean, it's the weirdest things. Like, yeah. that's yeah. a out of it. t shirt, $1,200. <laughs> like, <laughs> where? Yes. Why? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, it's a it's fucking weird, man. I I don't hate it though. Like you said, like no, I, it doesn't yep. bother me. I I don't mind. Listen, here's the thing: if if the if the if Big Brother is watching, like really, all you're gonna hear is a bunch of farting and moaning when I get up. You know, 
<laughs> That's why your TikTok uh, for you page is so weird. It's all farts and girls with big butts. <laughs> Speaking of girls and farts, there is, I just saw an article today. There is a woman who made $200,000 by selling her farts in a jar. Yeah, that's jar. true. I know yeah, about this. Yeah, but did this. you hear she got like sick or something apparently? Yeah, from all because the of farting her diet. and the diet. Because she was like, had like a specific like high fiber diet for her farts. So she can, oh God. <laughs> she had okay. to go to the emergency room. Yeah. yeah. Because she had gassed herself out so bad. And then she had farted so much. You know, we're not supposed to fart that much. Right. We're not? Wait, what happened to her? (laughs) Wait, is what what would you say? Yeah, what would you say the upper limit is for farts in a day? (laughs) Well, $100,000 worth uh, in a couple months. I could show you a uh, spreadsheet for uh, seven guys at the Poconos. You should have bottled them up. Wouldn't you just like be able to like create a scent that smells like a fart and just like spray it into a Well, Gwyneth Paltrow could probably figure that out for us. I forgot to to bring that up. Yeah, I got to let you smell that um i totally we'll hold, it, we'll hold it up to the screen here. why don't why don't you just wipe your finger on it and then i'll just smell that <laughs> hate all that hate all that god eighth grade was fucking awesome um all right guys well i think i've said hello to everybody and uh, we're glad you yes guys it are does here. last in the jar and we'll or in a cup if you fart into it and then put your hand oh, over yeah. the top and then fling it into somebody's face 100 well. yeah, yeah you can fart in a jar and leave like i we did that when we were kids we'd fart in a jar and like leave it for a few days and yeah. go back and see i think there's even just the cupping method seemed to work as far as my brother went yep. Sure, that was hand. my brother. in your hand and in the yeah, one hundred percent. It works. I mean, hey, if a you can in the smack and oh, cheese, okay. <laughs> if you can smell a fart, it means there's feces in your nose. So, yeah, presumably you can cup Where it did you and. Get... It so goes. okay, so I actually asked a medical person. I think I asked Casey Fisher about this the other day because I I think the same thing. I wonder. Okay, if I smell that fart from across the room. <laughs> That has obviously made some sort of well, gas or something that has traveled into my nose. So that 100% came out of their butt, right? Yes. So isn't it to say that if you guys all know, the, like you can be next to someone who smokes in their car, and if they blow the smoke out the window, you can smell it in sure. your car. So that... Went from their lungs over into into the thing, and that does smell work the same? <laughs> like, does do you understand what I'm saying? Like, <laughs> you do not get poop in your nose from a fart. That's what I don't. I, okay, I right? can't. Right? That nope. can't be a thing. If nope. that's how that worked, I would have had chronic pink eye the first two years of our marriage or nasal infections. Right. Well, I mean, but it, but whatever does smell did the bacteria, come out of their. It came out of their butt. Yes, it came out of their butts, but it doesn't. It doesn't carry fecal material right. through the air into your nose you are smelling gas it's just okay. like if you burp you just had a taco you burp yeah i'm not getting taco in my nose i'm just getting the gas the gas from your but in, in that gas aren't there taco or poop particles <laughs> no Can't. no Can't. microscopic microscopic yeah. fecal matter Do-do. otherwise why would it it's obviously tiny it... tacos no. it's gas traveling it's gas science from the back bacter- the bacteria in your bowels <laughs> creates the gas. Okay. Every time you fart, do you poop? No. You're letting gas escape from your body. Oh my God, it we're doesn't so close to the sharding conversation. Wait, again. you don't fart every time you I'm sorry. What? Never mind. <laughs> I fucked it up. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. You know, Yahoo answer seems to have a bunch of uh, different <laughs> ideas on that. Like... All, all very well thought out. <laughs> if, if I'm, I'm sure you can imagine. Uh huh. <laughs> I don't. You know, it's like if you smell somebody's bo, for example. Right. That's a smell again but, from bacteria. Okay, but is a smell? Does is that does that have any sort of solid? It's a fucking crazy thing, it's right? A gas. Like, I get that, but yeah. Okay, so it's just fumes. Right. But that's moisture. Sure. And made that, up of particles. So could you <laughs> never mind. This is a fucking God. Man, I don't understand. And here's the thing. 
Why do why do we even do the goddamn movies anymore? This is the fucking show. <laughs> what movie? This you know? is the real meat and balls of the I, show I mean, right I'm here. Seriously, like, we could do this for another thirty minutes. We'd probably be the number one fucking podcast. What would our genre in America? Be? Who gives Sharks? a shit? Well, no, it'd miscellaneous. Be the number one sharding discussions. Do they Shart have a discussion. miscellaneous group, or does everything have to fit in a group? No, no, no. I think we'd be comedy talk. Or something like that. Could be pop, pop culture, yeah. you know, poop culture, whatever. Poop culture. I'm telling you, we should take a vote. Culture of poop. I was like thinking, like taking a culture, like and I just to see do if, that, and see if people want us to just fucking lose the movie and just come in here and just bullshit. Or what was the one movie, Five Hundred Days of Summer? We did a four minute. Yeah, we should do five minute reviews of every movie. Yeah, we should just pick a movie per season. Yes, and, and really we break talk about it down. A clip every we can, one clip we can reference every it. month. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. The clip of the month club. Yeah, welcome to March. Yeah, we'll, first. Oh. we'll do Mafia twenty twenty two. Oh my god! Uh, we'll watch two movies. Was it wasn't it you, Amy, that came up with the Rockstar Dad thing? Where because I have like two guys named Mike already scheduled, and you, I, I yeah, yeah. So <laughs> just everybody in February is going to be named Mike. That's going to be on that show. It's a fucking funny idea. Oh, we have another. We do Mike March. God, Mike March is such a good idea. Maybe I should rebook all of them. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mike Madness, <laughs> we could call it. Um, all right, guys. <laughs> uh, welcome to Jared Goes to the Movies. We're going to talk about the movie Meatballs. You guys know the drill. If you want to sponsor or help, you guys know the drill. If you want to help the show out and uh, support us, you just go to Jared Goes to the. No. That's not it either. You go to patreon.com slash Jarrett Goes to the Movies. Man, Sean, I am making your job so fucking hard this time. It's <laughs> not Damon. arguing. I just, that's what I sound like. Just Matt Damon. Um, all right. The only thing that I want to point out is we got no new supporters this week. This week, uh, And I'm going to be honest. That hurts my feelings a little bit. I realize Christmas just happened. Maybe the movies are just in the way. <laughs> you don't think they like the movies? <laughs> <It> could be. <laughs> Let's fucking <laughs> sincerely. I wonder if we did one. Out. Let's I bet just if we did put one a without vote a movie out there. Like next week, like, and we just called it a movie thing. I bet somebody would like. Not that is notice. exactly what I was just about to say. We should just do it and yeah. see if anybody notices. Yeah. Okay, so cut that out of the audio, people. When I scheduled for January, Magnolia, everybody was like, "No, I don't want that one." So they either turned it down. So if you look at who did Magnolia, Jason Aylesworth takes everything. But everybody else is just the reserve players that just want to play. No, oh, because they don't want to watch it. No one play. wanted to do yeah. Magnolia. I don't, I'm not bashing on Eric. I'm just saying that. I mean, the thing oh, is. Oh, yeah. No, sorry. No, I picked you, a Eric. critically no, acclaimed I, actually, awesome movie. I'm going to be honest. I wanted to watch that movie, no too. And I really am glad that I did. I, I, I actually. I, that's another one that I. I will watch that again sometime. Like whether it's on an airplane or whatever. I'll watch it again. Just, you know, whatever. But. um yeah, I guess the the one thing that the movie does is if like we run out of shit to talk about, we at least got a clip to do. But, yeah, uh, maybe we know. should just have like other video clips, if like just in case of emergencies and in case of emergency, uh-huh. video. Clips. Have you guys ever been to Logan's, the bar in Addison, that will just no. you'll just be hanging out, and then they'll just play a random music video on the screen. Or like, um, and then they'll go back to music. So, or they'll just do a movie clip. Like one was from Cliffhanger and he's, <laughs> you know, like holding on and the hand slips and then they bust into Tom Petty's Free Fallen. Which is <laughs> oh, pretty that's awesome. fun. Yeah, that's good shit. Yeah. And we could just have a whole like back catalog library of just conversation starter clips of oh. old ads or we could have or we could just go you to know, that bar and hang out sometimes but yeah. fetish yeah. videos or well, fit, fit, i can't you know, do that videos. with all y'all in the room there's no way i'd be able to do it just depending on you know we'll, we'll look away <laughs> 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 um yeah i don't know fuck it I, but anyway we're gonna talk about meatballs tonight <laughs> uh this mm-hmm. is a david dooley and woody chambers production woody chambers just had a birthday by the way happy birthday buddy um i all of our producers are also at the $20 level or up per month, not per episode. Uh, they get all kinds of cool perks and things like that. There's three coming. I'm super excited about all of them. And uh, they're even like actually ordered and shit. So 
Um, I'm doing fucking great right now. Uh, those producers are <clears throat> Ad Craner, Amy Strombottom. <laughs> fucking shit. All right. Ad Craner, Amy Strongbottom Pitsinger, Andy Smith, Angie Thorin, Brian Mason, Brian Sullivan, Brian Dunning, Shell Ordway, Chris, the $12 million man, Cranfill, Chris Jacobs, Corey Reed, Daniel Cotton, David Dooley, David Kendrick, David. The original Murray. You know, the original reminds me of Schlotsky's. Oh. Uh, Dennis Hopp, Denny Chambers, Diana Wheeler, Diane Freakin' Small, Dom Scherfenberg Petretta, Ernie Soulman McCracken, God damn it, Gage Strickland, Gregory Cardone, Greg Lee, Greg the Hammer Stevens, a Hangover You Don't Deserve podcast, Dr. Jason Ellsworth and Kidney Pete, Jay Palladino, Jeff Millman, Joe fucking Barlow. Nope, sorry. Fucking Joe Barlow, Rat Pack, Joey Bishop, John Gickler, Josh Hanlon, Josh Millman, MVP, Kate Etro, Katie Gardner, Kim Frosting on the beat, uh, 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 Murphy, Kirsty Fisher. Yeah. Lisa Winslow, Lucy Murray, Mandy Pretty, Melody Ortloff. Wait, I skipped. Lily Hollihan, Lisa Sponsor Sponsor, Liz Sean, I'm so fucking sorry, dude. I don't know what's happening. I'm losing my goddamn mind. He's hammered. Lily, I am not. <laughs> Lily Hollihan, Lisa. <laughs> fucking shit. Just leave all this in now. Fuck it. I don't give a shit. Fuck, we'll do it live. <laughs> uh, Lily Hollihan, <laughs> Lindsay Sponsor Sponsor, Lisa Winslow, Lucy Murray, Mandy Pretty, Melody Ortloff, Michael Price, Mike Leblonovitz, Nick Brignoni, Rodon James, Ray Elliott, Rich Osborne, Robert, Dirty Muffins O'Doyen, Ryan Clydesdale, shit. <laughs> shit. <laughs> Sorry. I actually did cough there. Sarah, The Undertaker, DeAngelis, Sean Blackstone, Sean Barger, Steve May, Steve Rhodes, Tom Murray, Trey Wren, Vinny, No Fucking Clue, Cataldo, Wendy, What's a Matter, Willie Cumminer, Woody Chambers, and Sphee Hurst, everybody. Give it up for all of our amazing. Oh, my Lord, man. I had I'd, I'd trouble getting through that fucking thing there. Um, well, guys, uh, I, I'm excited to talk about this movie, actually. I gotta, I gotta check one thing, though, real super quick. Give me a ch second chance. Okay. D's nuts? No, no, I just see that Casey was re responding to you from earlier, so making sure that yes. uh, I don't need to handle something else. Okay, guys, uh, meat Meatballs, 1979. Um, that's pretty crazy to me. I mean, I was born in 72. I remember this movie being a really, really big deal. And then uh, Casey talking about it earlier reminded me that this was kind of one of those movies that became like the movie of the week, like really early on. You know, it was like the ABC, whatever, like they'd show it once a year. And you'd oh, watch Meatballs. Got it. If you think about it, they didn't, there's not really a lot that makes this movie not television ready it's pg you know they, yeah. they didn't really i mean you know, they could have gone r pretty easily and been like most of the other 80s movies but this isn't an 80s movie it's a 79 movie mm -hmm. you know? and uh 79 you know it's a good position uh it is a uh, comedy an hour and 39 minutes this movie six are you trying to like envision what that would mean me too like, <laughs> yeah, there's like a leg out and like a... it's just 10 better than a regular 69 <laughs> <laughs> uh 6.2 on imdb and a very very close 72 percent on rotten tomatoes this movie uh this is pretty cool actually this movie cost 1.6 million to make which today, uh, it, and so today it would have been six point eight million. All right, now it made forty three million dollars. So it cost one point six, made forty three. So that is the equivalent of six point eight million. Cost one hundred and eighty four million today. And this movie has to keep making. I mean, we bought it yesterday. You know, because yeah, okay. y'all doing the thing. Like we do this thing where it's like it's four ninety nine to rent it, six ninety nine to buy it. Why don't I just buy it? Right. I mean, I had to rent it. However, it was free on IMDb. DB, I know, but you app. probably have to watch commercials. No, I don't even mind commercials. It just depends on how much time I'm willing to waste. Right. 
but it was so pixelated. Oh, really? It was How so How pixelated was it? Awful. It was just big blocks of colors. It was so colors. pixelated, she thought it was the genitals of an Asian person. I almost did. <laughs> like Channel One in 1996? Yes. There we go. Got so, it. and I ended up renting it anyway. Why don't they just fly the Japanese porn stars to, like, some other location where they don't have to put the pixels on there and film it there so all of us can just watch regular Japanese porno without all, of all the craziness? There's a reason they're so good at Minecraft. And <laughs> Minesweeper. <laughs> <laughs> that was funny. Thank you. Um, <laughs> hold on. I'm going to have to give Eric a second on this one. That was good. <sighs> it does, though. Ah! It looks like. Oh, it there does, he goes. It does look like a game of Minecraft down there, right? I mean, y'all are, y'all are with me, right? I still yeah. don't understand Minecraft. Yeah, me either. I, but it, to me, it just looks like pixelated vaginas. And they, you, you would think after listening to my son explain Minecraft to me. For the last 290 hours of his and my life, uh, <laughs> that I would know exactly how it all works. It is uh, pretty rough sometimes. I, I will we say. Should, we should film a video <laughs> of a Japanese lady naked with the pixelation, and Eric's just over there, like, trying to, like, <laughs> like break it through. <laughs> It really, this is, we are giving away a very good skit. It would be really funny if it's like <laughs> naked and they, and it's pixelated, but you zoom in and someone's playing Minecraft down there, <laughs> like trying to get, the, John, trying to get, you make that trying to us, get the please. cavern open, you know? <laughs> yeah. I mean, for all we know, we don't know what Japanese vaginas look like. <laughs> no. <laughs> Speak for Yet. yourselves. They could be different. No, I really don't either, but my crew. They are different, like, Sean. You know, they're different. Oh, they're, they're sideways. They're sideways. Yeah. 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 They smile at you. Yeah. I can't wait to meet all my Japanese. <sighs> no, 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 no. I have never uh -huh. had any experience over there. Uh, 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 <laughs> I believe I believe one hundred percent of my crew has, uh, but no, no, no band guys at all. Um. All right, Eric. Had you seen this movie before? I had not, and in fact, I thought I was getting into one of those. I don't know. When I hear meatballs, I think of like Porky's and Revenge of the Nerds yeah. and Animal House. Like I thought those were all basically the same film, like vulgar. Yeah. Uh, like and so that's what I thought I was getting into on this. And yeah, I think it's important. As to it turns note, out, I, I think it's important to note the time, you know, and like when the you know th this is before those movies really started pushing the envelope, so to speak, you know? Um, and so I, again, I, I, re I was watching this last night thinking, Oh, okay. They're going to show them fucking by the campfire. You're going to see, you know, you're, this is where they take their shirts off or there's, you know, mm -hmm. and I was actually surprised that I didn't see that. I didn't remember that this movie was PG. I'm surprised you're not singing. Fucking by the campfire to the tune of smoking in the boys' room in your head, because I am. Fucking in the campfire. Oh, in it. Uh, in the Ooh, campfire. Ow, ow. Jesus Christ. Where Ooh, is that a 79? Wait a minute. Just one second. <laughs> Feeling hot, hot, hot. Uh, all right, Eric. Um, let's go. Oh, Eric Free synopsis. It's summertime at Camp Meatball. And a ragtag group of campers led by their unconventional camp counselor are on a mission to cause as much trouble as they can before it's too late. <laughs> <laughs> All right, let's see what the movie is actually about. Over to Eric for his synopsis. Wacky hijinks of counselors and campers at a less than average summer camp. <laughs> I mean, mine isn't even what the movie's about, and it's better than yeah, what I pulled I off of IMDb. This is a pretty interesting story in that, like, to me, seeing this as a kid, I really didn't. I, I, I As an adult, it's it's pretty hard to grasp that these actually aren't counselors. They're counselors in training. They're there to help. Oh, so true. The there are a few actual counselors that are in the cast, but you won't see them on the canoe trip or this or this. Mm -hmm. You know, there's like the one blonde guy that, you know, that is like, he can't fucking run. He can't even play soccer. You know, that yeah. guy's an actual counselor. So 
as I was watching this, I was like, who the fuck is sleeping in the cabins with I the kids? I thought the same thing, and then I remembered CIT. And then you remember, they're counselors in training. And so, but it is super interesting that, you know, the head of the camp and the, the, the head counselor or whatever hang out with them pretty much the entire time. Mm-hmm. Um, there's a lot of problems with this movie as far as how it aged. Uh, it's definitely rapey in a couple of areas. Uh, there's uh, definitely some situations, you know, um, adults being alone with children in situations where they 100% should not be. Do you want to hear one of my notes? Yes. Just I do. on that <clears throat> note, even but though only we're one, we're not at this part <laughs> yet, but I just have. Alone with a kid in a cabin slinging nuts. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, that, fuck, that's you what they were you doing. You should have goddamn waited for that. That's a good joke. <laughs> yeah. You just ask Sean to cut it. Put I it in where it's supposed to go because he didn't have enough. To I do. think it's super important to, as we're talking about this movie, to put this into perspective and to put the time in. I think it's very important what Eric already said that you, I'm going to be honest, I went into this. I've seen this movie before. It's been a very long time. Grew up seeing it all the time. My brother loved this movie. He's five years older than me, so this he was this, the target demographic. But I went into this thinking that it was going to be another Porky's, that it was like uh, Animal House or, you know, where basically it's just, hey, the guy fell, and now, hey, now there's tits, and, you know, th- that kind of thing. Free for all sex romp. Yeah, I guess I didn't realize that it was PG either. As I was watching it, I just kept going, "Well, they are incredibly restrained for yeah. you know it being a movie of this type." And wait, this is actually kind of a sentimental, sweet kind of movie it in is, some ways. I am so glad you said that. It's I am anxious to hear if you guys even got that from it. Like, it's pretty important the story that happens to me. Between a counselor who didn't have to, but buddied up to a kid who had zero friends and, you know, made that kid's whole summer and probably sent that guy's life into a better direction. It's pretty goddamn powerful, actually, if you think about it. And you did. And that seems funny to say about a movie called Meatballs that was made in 79 and stars Bill Murray just doing his fucking Bill Murray shit. But there's something to it. As far as I'm concerned, uh, and I, I'm anxious to hear what you guys think about it as we go. I know that a few of you guys were um, a little leery of this one, thinking that, uh, and you know, again, it did. I mean, there's a few things that didn't age so well, um, but you know what? We'll get into it. Let's get into the movie Meatball Sean. Well, it's uh, 7.05 in the uh, a.m., and... It's a, wow, 43 degrees on the old Camp North Star weather dial, and that is kind of nippy for a June 25, isn't it? Whew. I'm Trooper Harrison. Ah! Ah! I'm your head counselor, and this is my wake-up show. I'll be coming at you every morning about this time, hoping to make your summer camp experience the best available in this price range. <laughs> of course... Across the lake, over Camp Mohawk, uh, they won't be getting up for another hour or so. And when they do, they'll be awakened by servants bearing croissants and cafe au lait. Oops, hope I didn't hit anybody. Yeah. But over here at Camp North Star, this morning, we're going to be having a delicious gruel breakfast. And don't forget to ask for seconds because it's all the gruel you can eat. So this starts an ongoing thing of of his announcements and i actually wanted to go and find a website and sort of read them all out because they're the gift that keeps on giving the entire movie like Uh, yeah they're just these quick one-liners where and all of them are fucking spot on did you look them up i didn't oh no i mean again that's one of those things where i was like what am i gonna do fucking go down the list and read these things but I just wanted to know if they, if they struck you. Were were you guys able to pay enough attention to a movie that's this old to catch those and to and to just hear the comedy and like because what basically what this movie was doing is scene give you a little bit of Bill Murray scene right. give you a little bit of Bill Murray. it was Bill Murray show for sure one hundred percent I enjoy I thought it, these little things were funny like you said the one liners 
Yeah. But I also, I don't know if I would have picked them up as well if I didn't watch it with the captions on either. Right. Yeah. Yeah. I had them off for the first 15 minutes and then quickly was like, oh, that's why I don't understand anything that's going on. So I had to turn them on real quick. But I'm telling you, this thing starts with the panes of glass breaking and then the, the... not getting the ladder knocked out of the feet. And I just sat there and went, God. Oh my God. It's a little, it's a little slapsticky about, at first, isn't it? I mean, were uh, you, that's what I thought I was getting into. And I, I was like, I'm not going to be able to handle this. Let me ask you this. this. Did the, uh, I mean, I think the first joke is so funny where he's just like, okay, let's get to the national anthem. And he plays the bagpipes or whatever. Oh my God. It gets me every single time, you know, like, and, <laughs> And then when that song kicked in, like, do y'all know that song? Like as being young, are you ready for the summer? No, no, no. I mean, it kind of sounds familiar, yeah. but no. really, is that a really real song movie real from this movie? But they obviously they <clears throat> used it in tons and tons of stuff in the 80s. Is right. like, I mean, again, nobody my age doesn't know if you it's started like singing that ksh- song. Ksh- Whatever that yeah, was. Yeah, from Ferris Bueller. Yeah. You're exactly right. Yeah. Yeah, they just throw that in everything. Mount, mount. Yeah. Or, uh, bom, that was it. Bom, bom. Yeah. Or, dun, 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 yeah. Yeah. Ivan Reitman did this movie, uh, who again worked with these guys quite a few times. And um so I, I just wanted to ask you guys about camp in general. Did and I'm certain this has come up before, but act like it hasn't. Did anybody ever go to sleepaway camp? Ever? Yes. Yeah? I went to church camp for okay. at least two summers. All right, one week at a time. Yeah, one week at a time. And I think I was probably seven to nine ish. Okay. Yeah. But then in fifth grade around our area, fifth graders go to about, I think it's three nights away at camp now. Yeah, they go to Sky Ranch. Yep, they go to Sky Ranch. For us, it was Classen. I went to Camp Classen. There was camp Goddard. Classen. But yeah, there's a few around the area. But we would go for, I think we went for a full week, but mm-hmm. now they only go for a few days. What's the deal? This is a, I, I've always wondered this. So fifth graders, they take you to those, pla- but it's not church camp. I mean, they no. can't, they can't actually. Yeah. I'm curious about the Sky you. Ranch thing. Like I want, like, like they can't be super churchy in the fifth no. grade one at Sky Ranch, right? Like, no, no, but they can't I think do any... they probably just make that an advertising thing to get those kids to go back there. Right. They show them. Oh, sure. An amazing this is time what we do during days. the summer yeah. because. Oh. Fifth graders go any time during the school year because they have to rotate it through so many different schools. So you might go when it's freezing cold out. Mm -hmm. So they're going to be like, come back in the summertime and you can do the blob or this high dive and all the fun things. Is the blob the thing on the water where you, yeah. yeah. And Classen, whenever you went, was it still just like a dirty old lake with a tower you could jump off of? That was it. the end of it? Yeah. Yeah, Same. (laughs) Oh, and then you got to dissect the owl pellets. Oh, I did that. Yeah. Yeah, I got stung by a scorpion. It was fun. Was there a camper named Jason? Probably. Did he play hockey? No. <laughs> um, yeah, I went to Camp Lujo Kismuth. Keep it safe. Keep it fun. You made that up. Uh, keep it safe. Make it fun. No, I didn't. Uh, and it was a church camp. I went there three years. How uh, old were you? I was uh, second, third, and f- no. Third, fourth, and fifth grade. And <laughs> the first year, I met Sandy Markhart, who was an orphan from the Tipton home in Oklahoma City. Oh, oh yeah. And uh yeah, <laughs> we I also met Cleavon Davis and uh a guy named Jackie Martin, a guy a kid named Skeet Miller. And we went to the camp every year for about three years, and Sandy Markhart was my girlfriend, and we held hands. She sounds hideous. Have you looked any of those people up like on social media ever? I feel like you'd have to. Yeah, did you pen pal through the school year? So we did. We actually wrote letters and stuff, and oh, actually gosh. I went to Skeet Miller's house after camp one year and then he came to mine or whatever and uh it's funny how relationships like that though were dependent on whether or not you could actually sit down and fucking pen a letter you know like that's a lot of fucking uh that's a lot of discipline for yeah, a little you have shit to like really me want to i look, look i was exactly the same 
back then. Only, you know, I think I, 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 you know, again, I kind of all over the place all the time. I definitely did not have the patience to sit down, but I would write a uh, Sandy Markart a letter every once in a while and cleave on. And uh, like I said, uh, Skeet Miller taught me how to throw a curveball, and uh, I did win the uh, parachute making contest uh, where you goodness. have a rock thing. Uh, my team won the stopwatch, but here's the here's the thing. I actually had a counselor do this for me, take me under his uh -oh. wing. His name was Shane. Seriously, and his little brother was actually at the no, and he was fucking nice to me, and like I, you know, it was super super fucking cool, and like it made me feel like a big kid, you know. That is um, cool. Do nothing you, crazy happened. No, no, no. Do you I, look him up? No, I don't remember his last name. Oh, <laughs> what a but, shame. Uh, you know who was a camp counselor that has like really good stories is Dennis Turkey. Oh, he does. Yeah, he's that's got right. Good, good camp counselors. That would have been a good one. I didn't even think to have him on here. So we slept in an old army barrack and uh, bunk beds like army. And so all the boys were in one, all the girls were in another. And uh, our, the guy who was the head of the dorm had a boa constrictor and you got to watch it eat a mouse. Like, Ooh, that's just right fun. on the fucking floor, right? And then everybody got athlete's foot. Ew. And uh, this, kid, yeah. this kid named Kevin got it so bad he had to fucking go home. That's why I was confused when you go to camp class and they tell you to wear a thongs. Bring your thongs <laughs> yeah. for the shower. And I'm like, this is yeah. fifth grade, but yeah. sure. Yeah, fuck it, right? You know? And then the mom was like, excuse me. God, it is a okay. traumatic Where are your flip -flops? to be sharing. I realized that like the showers were curtained and whatever, mm -hmm. but like everybody knew. I mean, everybody knew everything. I mean, you'd just go take a shower and then you'd leave and all of a sudden fucking Kayla, what's her face, has a padded bathing suit and everybody's gonna fucking know about it. That's right. Right. Yes. Um, you know, and uh, here's the thing about uh, Camp Lou Joe Kismuth. <laughs> I still feel like it's fake. <laughs> no, it's real. It does sound fake. It does. Keep it safe. Make it fun. Love you, buddy. I went. Good night. I'll I see went the to morning. Camp uh, Sagittarius Jefferson, and uh, that was super fun. <laughs> but I have some stories to tell you guys about camp as we go through the thing and uh, uh, about this and and the differences. The thing is, is that again, it was church camp, and so much of the day was you know you were doing this thing, and for me, I wasn't allowed to get baptized because my dad wanted to do it. And uh, mm -hmm. and he ne but he never got around to it. Oopsie! <laughs> Are you um, still not baptized? No. What? I don't think I knew that. No, I'm not baptized. I'm you heathen. I got saved in the Baptist church because they scared the shit out of me in the sixth grade. Yeah, oh, we got saved. God. Yes, we, yeah, we got saved to use the skate park. Like we fucking get it. But that was the I thing. Is like all you had to do is just go. Yeah, I want to be sure. forgiven, and Jesus can live here. All right, I'm I'm <laughs> fucking cool. Yeah, yeah. That's Move on it. in. Yeah, no, I did I, the same thing. I got uh, taken well, that's not what group. the Bible says. So have fun in hell. Well, you know, the See Bible there. says that. The Bible says that if you accept Jesus into your heart, then you can use the uh, half pipe and go to heaven. <laughs> yeah. I'm pretty sure we're just going to continue this podcast in hell, right? 100%. Yeah, it's just going to, I mean, it's, we're going to want the fan. I told you that. Like, well, I've been to baptized, so I will forget, I will repent like one second before I think I'm about to die for all just the shit. And you guys will be fucked and I'll be in heaven That's with lonely. Ted Cruz. I think the next time walking Abbott. around up there, I'm sure. I think the next time like I see my dad, I'm just going to have him shoot me with a super soaker in the face. Yeah. And what? we just call it good. Yeah. One right. time, Let's make a party out of it. Yeah. One time my stepdad threw a bottle of holy water at me while I was watching TV one time and I was there like, what the hell is well, this? Well, we don't and have that he, in and he Church just said, Christ. Yeah. Just check in. Because okay. I was in my Marilyn Manson-y <laughs> phase. Oh, he wanted to see if it burned you. <laughs> That's yeah. funny. Yeah. I was just like, what? Just check in. Just check in. Yeah, I, I was always super intrigued by all of that. I mean, like, to me, Holy Water was something out of vampire movies and shit, and, you know, even seeing a piano for the first time in a church was fuck. What? Well, oh my! What the fuck is that? Oh my god! You me know? and my brother got. We would just get in so much trouble because whenever we go visit my stepdad's family, who were all super mega Catholic, and Catholic churches are fun. You kneel, you stand. You kneel, you stand. You chant. It's a workout. You, you kneel, you stand. 
And uh, yeah, it's super fun. There's lots of candles and mm -hmm. crackers. There's all, yeah, there's all these cool things. And crackers. It, yeah, it's like a <laughs> thing along, like the bouncing ball. Like it's yeah. really easy to do. I think they prefer white people, not cracker. <laughs> oh, <laughs> yeah, there he is coming in. But Roadhouse. Yeah, my brother got his ass whipped because he fucking dipped into the holy water. <laughs> he just, just wanted to get, just touched it. Not supposed to do that unless you're Catholic. And he'd always try to, you know, do the cross and all the things. And my mom would be like, I can stop it. Like your son wants to, by the way, our youngest wants to be able to do that. So he's like, what religion do I need to be able to do to do the cross? Thing he's been trying to be Jewish for literal years. Yeah. He made me oh, make really? him a dreidel one year. He goes, do we do that? No, we don't really do that. I don't know. God. Yeah. It's, dreidel. I don't know. But I went to my Go grandma, ahead, my grandma's Lutheran and Lutheran is similar to Catholic, but not. And. I've been going there since I was a little kid, like little, little. And you go and you do communion and they gave you They a don't cracker. do crackers, though. It's real bread. Like yeah. it's oh, yeah, a yeah. goddamn fucking hunk of like. Yeah, uh, that's what I had growing bread. up in the Methodist what? church. We just had like what? You would yeah. break open the huge well, yeah, you loaf break of bread open and the I'm body like, of here bread. we go. Oh, yeah, that's, no, that no, no, no. We, we had crackers. Manischewitz, and... Manischewitz crackers, no, unleavened no, bread. No, it's this, yeah. just this fucking. No, we got really good Kroger bakery white bread. Oh, it's delicious. Well, I've always done it and I'm like, well, it's, you know, it's nice. Go to my grandma's church. I get to do communion. It just like feels neat. And then um apparently you're not supposed to do that if you're not baptized. And I, I didn't like, do it. Well, I didn't fucking. Well, you didn't want to do it because you thought it was just uncomfortable. But no, like, I didn't do it because I know I'm not supposed to. Yeah, but I was like, I didn't know that was a thing. All right, yeah. where are these rules? Because but I'm, I'm pretty smooth. sure I. But eat my grandma bread and didn't realize I wasn't baptized. <laughs> any church that I've gone to. <laughs> I you don't. Won't. You just goddamn do it. I eat the things and I drink the drinks. If I mean, I, I, I don't think it's at all churches. <laughs> I think it in, in like the Baptist church, because like the village church, that like churchy cult thingy yeah. I was involved in briefly, they would pass it around and that was their way of saying that you've like accepted. Well, I've accepted many a time. They also I've pass around wine a, from uh, more strangers than I that. think basically if you put money in the thing, you can have as many crackers as you want. Sweet. Let's yeah. go buy the crackers. Now, I don't think I put money in there. Either. But can we the, start doing communion? The at one the end thing of this that show? we do. <laughs> there's too many show <laughs> ideas tonight. Uh, so they, uh, the when they do the lunchroom shenanigans again, it reminded me of Camp Blue Joe Kismuth, and uh, fucking real. It was uh, it was pretty fun. <laughs> like if someone had their elbows off the table or on the table. They'd get go, your elbows off the, the table, table Jared Reddick. Reddick. Get your elbows off the table, Jared Reddick. We have seen Reddick. you once, seen or twice. It once or twice. And it, it is a really nice. nice. Get your elbows off the table, Jared Reddick. And then they'd go, round the flagpole, you must go, you must go. And then you'd had to do a lap around the flagpole, which is really, really far. That sounds like a nightmare. We, now, we had to... It we had to stand worse. up and sing a song. Stand up on your chair and sing a song in front of the whole Iron Son Springs Christian of group. of a bitch. That Where was terrible. Iron Springs? Where Was it far or was it near? I looked this up the other day. Near it's down far. in the hill country, it wherever, wherever it is. <laughs> Camp Lujo uh, Kismith has done 500 baptisms since 1962. That's what it. about camp? Guess who out of, of, of twenty thousand campers? Yeah. Everybody's dad. Well, they're not doing a very good job. They them. did it in a fucking horse trough. Ew! You would get in this horse trough, but but I but I participated in everything else. You've never I, done it in a horse trough. What it or baptized? I don't know. Yeah. Anyway, so but also if you got a letter from home, you would have to go around the flagpole for it once for each letter, and if you got a package. You had to go around the mailbox. Was it really fucking far? I'm looking at a packages. picture of this flagpole right now. It's just and my grandma would do this thing where she'd send me a letter and each one would have like one word in it. And it and I have to. But then she would volunteer in the kitchen and put a shitload of money on my fucking. Nice. Uh, what do you call it? A can What's the thing called where you. Uh, canteen. Your canteen. Canteen. My canteen. Yeah, and that way you can go in there and be like, yeah, I can buy Whoppers for the entire fucking camp today. Oh, dang. Or yeah. some ramen and Takis. No, and no, no, we didn't have that shit. Boil that together. Thing where oh, wait, that was she different. She the that's... bottom of my suitcase with, like, candy and stuff. <laughs> that's what, That's a different time, Eric. That's me and you last summer during the two weeks we took off, remember? Uh, now, um... Did you go to sleepaway camp? I, uh... <laughs> we went to stay awake camp. <laughs> <laughs> But I went into this camp, uh, and they would do that, and you'd have to do all of these different things. But, and I didn't know anybody. So for popularity, I had to have a secret weapon. And my secret weapon was 
I could talk like the shmoo. And the shmoo is basically Glomer from the pun- Punky Brewster cartoon. Or there's other things that have talked like that. But I can talk <laughs> like that. And uh, so everybody wanted me to be in their skits because I could do that voice. And uh, I was very, very popular. And that is why Sandy Markhart chose me as her Ooh. boyfriend. Because the shmoo. Did you have to talk in that voice when you guys were making out Holding stuff? hands. We didn't make out. They held. Oh, they're, no. they were holding hands. They were holding we were hands. holding hands. <laughs> you know who else has hands? <laughs> the devil. And he uses them for holding. Yeah, it says right here that Camp Lujo Kismith is to provide a wholesome activity for young people. Yeah. They didn't have a swimming pool or air conditioning when I went, by the way. Bible reading. Yeah. Bible talking about. <laughs> Bible <laughs> thinking about. <laughs> I remember we. Uh, <laughs> no, it stands for keep it spiritual, make it fun. No, they changed it to keep it safe, keep it fun. Or or at least that's what it was when I was there, I promise. Because it was on the shirt and everything. Well, right now it stands for keep it spiritual. We we, keep we it used fun. to do skits and stuff, and that's when... Like uh, talent show, right? My line was this. Yeah, here's one of my lines, Amy. This is really good. This is way better than Anne Reith's too, by the way. All right. So I had this line. Hey, um, Mr. <laughs> such and such. I can't remember his name, but I go, you know, the Bible also... Has baseball in it, and a, and and he would go, <laughs> what? And I'd go, yeah. In the big inning, God created, and that was my line. In that, uh, oh. in that one, yeah. um, in our skit that we had to do in Camp Classen, which wasn't churchy at all, but was still just a real overall weird experience for fifth graders in Louisville, Texas. Um, we made fun of our, our math teachers fucking weird ass retainer situation <laughs> and nobody thought it was funny oh, <laughs> except, no. for, except for the yeah. children and all the adults were horrified <laughs> yeah that will happen from time to time <laughs> we didn't know have you ever done the thing where you did something bad to a teacher and you feel bad about it because i have i think i've no. told it on this fucking podcast before <laughs> we had a substitute teacher and she had a truck butt and oh, no. uh it was the oh my god this a is truck so, butt she had this you got butt. a lumpy butt no, like it Not like went there. out and there was a shelf there, like, <gasps> and it was like, a, and, and so I'd be like, they call the truck, but <laughs> anyway, <laughs> so I, <laughs> she walked by me oh, no. and I stuck a pencil there. Shut the fuck up. No. I swear to God, I did this. <laughs> and I feel bad about it. I'm saying right now, I'm admitting that I, I hope she's listening. <laughs> Oh, she, hey, Mrs. Truckbutt, we are she, very she's, sorry. She's got to be dead. I was, you know, like 17. But anyway, I stuck it there and she goes back up to the front of the class and we're all reading and stuff. And like me and my friends are just dying laughing, right? Because it's in there or whatever. You just can't fucking keep it together. Like even the people who, you know, were in like a different world than us, like knew what was happening. Everybody's fucking laughing at this thing. <laughs> And then she does this thing where she goes to adjust her dress and fucking finds a pencil on her butt and literally like brings the thing out, looks at it and is just like, hmm, okay. And sets it down on her desk and then just sits down and just, we continued on with class. And, and that you was the know that of, she went home oh, and she cried. had so I 100% did not know that at the time. I knew that it was mean. Uh, it would be. 20, 30 years later where I, it would just hit me one day of like probably the impact that that had mm-hmm. on her. And man, you, I, I, I don't feel good about it. I don't, I, I, and I honestly, after it happened, I didn't then, you know, but, uh, you know, I don't know. I fucking slipped it on there and, yeah. <laughs> oh, no. and I was a goddamn well, hero. Fucker. And yeah. you know that those other people, two or three people from that class is like, man, that was me. Yeah. Probably or, the <laughs> same exact time and day that you thought of it. They thought of it. Too. Probably. And, but they're also going, man, you remember that time Jarrett Reddick put the fucking <laughs> pencil on truck butts, but you know, <laughs> shelf it's truck butts, but it was a shelf. I swear to God, like it stuck out straight out and then went down. And uh, there, she also had a mustache. I didn't fucking make fun of that at all. She um, had dumps like a truck, I think. Man, I had a teacher in sixth grade that wore that for sure, for sure, for, for sure, sure wore like 
very bulky adult diapers, and you could tell by the way she would uh, squeeze in between yeah, the desk. Yeah, and yeah. she had braces, and it was this whole oh, thing. No, and everyone loved her, and like one kid fucking like got mad and like made a comment about her mm. about her braces. Luckily, not about Yeesh. the diapers. And I just remember like everybody being like, well, "We all fucking thought it, but that was really mean." Yeah. Like you know, we like had, you can't say it out loud. We had a teacher that was super super mean, named Miss Dunsmore, and she wore a wig. And everybody made fun of the fact that she wore a wig and she really was mean, but she loved me because I was always able to be funny, but not disrespectful. Right. Yeah. So, you know, that that was always my thing. Uh, I think I'm still like that at least. Do you 20, think a truck butt would agree 20 with 20 percent of the time. Yeah, that was pretty bad. Anyway, turns out uh, she wore a wig for a reason. Yeah, she had alopecia. No. She had been, she fucking fought cancer the entire time I was in high school and like had a son that went to our school and, you know, it was fucking really, really weird. Anyway, who, who won, uh, the Tropic of Cancer. Here's our moment of silence. (laughs) They call her truck, (laughs) but anyway, I never made fun of her for having a wig because I thought it looked nice, you know? And uh, she was nice to me, so anyway. <laughs>